Welcome to the farms.com risk management educational grain commodity marketing video series. This video series is being sponsored and brought to you by DeKalb Brand C to educate producers across Canada on how to do a better job of grain commodity marketing. In this 15th video series, and it's part of a four part mini series on basis, and this is the third uh, series within that four. Uh, part mini series on basis. We're going to look at basis in time versus basis in space. I'm going to quickly review basis again, define what basis is, and then we're going to look at that basis in time, compare it to basis in space, and we're also going to look at cost of carry. What is cost of carry? How can we take advantage of cost of carry? When should we do that? So let's start off with a review of what basis is. Again, this is a chart that shows cash versus futures. The difference really is basis. It's that simple. Basis is important part of your pricing decision because uh, the return is always the local cash price. Understanding that relationship between the futures and cash is important in that risk management strategy. Remember, futures is your biggest risk, not basis, but we should not ignore basis altogether. Uh, corn futures can drop from seven to three dollars in very quick order. Rarely do you see basis move that quickly or that wide uh, in a you know short period of time. So. Basis for grains um, is uh, the, the pricing system. The major function of that pricing system is allocated across the storage time. So there's two components to that storage time. There's basis in time and basis in space. The basis in time is at a delivery point like Chicago or Saskatoon in Western Canada. Basis in space is at a non-delivery point such as Illinois or Europe. Basis in time really in simple words is equal to the carrying cost. So what is carrying cost? Well, in a well-functioning market, delivery point basis equals carrying cost. Similarly, the spread between the futures months within that annual storage period equals carrying cost. Carrying cost is mainly the interest cost to carry the grain forward to store it should account for also shrink. Basis rises as that carrying cost rises. So this is a quick calculation tool for uh, cost to carry. If we add a interest rate of 5%, storage cost of 4 cents per month, including some shrink, we can see that we arrive at about a 7 cents per bushel cost per month. Let's give you some quick examples as to uh, whether we can, you know, show you whether there's a cost to carry in the market. This is a uh, uh, Chicago wheat example. This is futures as of today, this is May uh, 25th. Um, now, in our Chicago wheat example, the spread from July to September is about 49 cents. You can see it on the chart there. You can do the quick math yourself. And this spread, and the spread from July to December of 2011, is um, um, 98 cents. So the market is actually compensating the producer enough to store that uh, uh, because the, if you multiply two months by that, seven cents, um, you get the 14 cents. The five months multiplied by seven cents gets the 35 cents, yet the market's giving you 98 cents. So in this situation, a producer would actually take advantage of the cost to carry and not sell in the front months, but rather store and sell in the December 2011 futures month. Let's give you another example with, this is Minneapolis wheat from May 25th. These are some of the futures prices as of today. And in this example, um, we have an inverted market where the front months are higher than the deferred months uh, because they're concerned about the quality of milling wheat or supplies in the system. And therefore, the driving price is higher in order to ration demand. The spread from December to July of 2012 is approximately, it's barely a penny per bushel, very little cost to carry. So in this situation, a producer is not going to store um, because there's very little cost to carry. In fact, once the, the bushels are ready to harvest, he would just sell off of the, the um, uh, September or um, in July futures contract if your harvest is that early. In our corn example here, just to give you another example, and we got an inverted market for old crop 2010-11. The front months, July 2011, are higher than the deferred months because they're worried about supply. Supply is quite tight. Uh, they're worried that maybe supply may not meet um, very high demand. Futures are higher in order to ration that demand. However, the new crop 11-12 corn spread from December 11 to July 12 uh, is only 
23 and three quarters per bushel for six months worth of storage. Again, not worth storing. The, if you do the calculation, a uh, producer would need about 42 cents a bushel to store for six months. So therefore, again, the producer would sell off in December rather than store until July of 2012. The cost to carry is not enough to compensate the producer to store that far out. Let's look at canola. Here's a canola example from May 25th. And in uh, this example, the spread from July 11 to November 11 futures is 290 a metric ton. If you convert that to bushel, it's <coughs> excuse me, 0 0.065 per bushel. The spread from November 11 to July 12 is 17.8 or 40.4. Some carry there, still not enough to compensate the producer that needs about 49 cents per bushel. In our last example, we're looking at soybeans from May 25th, 2011. In this example, we have an inverted market again, similar to the corn example earlier. July 11 soybeans are slightly higher than November, not, not as high as the corn example, about 15 cents per bushel, as supplies remain tight. The spread from November, November 11 to July 12 is about 12 cents. Again, not enough to compensate that producer to store as far out as July of 12 the producer would sell off of that November 2011 futures contract. Now let's talk about basis in space. Basis in space uh, simply is equal to the transportation cost. The spatial component of basis at a different delivery point is equal to that transportation cost to and from that non-delivery point. Um, in essence, basis at a location different from, say, Chicago, will generally be determined by the transportation cost to and from that delivery point. Places that are at surplus will have a negative basis. The local price will be under Chicago cash by transportation costs. In this chart here, um, we've got East Central Illinois, which is a surplus producer. The local cash price will be below Chicago. It has to be low enough in order to move that corn out of uh, um, to some other point. Ravina, Italy is, a, is also included. Ravina is a deficit producer, so the price would have to be high enough in order to pay someone enough to move that grain to Italy. So in summary, um, understanding based on that cost of carrying wind to take advantage of and do that, that math uh, is very important to a producer's marketing plan. It can add more dollars to your bottom line. So ignoring basis, not part of a marketing plan. It, spend some time understanding basis because it can help add more dollars. Until uh, in our next video series, we're going to look at uh, some of the factors that affect grain pr prices over time. Thank you for joining me today. I hope I've provided you with some insight, some understanding of uh, basis in time versus basis in space and that cost of carry. We look forward to seeing you next time. Till then, take care.